Cycle Helm here is very good. And on top of that, if you run static, he has a 30% chance to be paralyzed. So you have a 40% chance to cripple Commodore, and on top of that, you can also kill it. So that's very good for Cycle Helm here. Um, anyways, great tank mon, can act as a pseudo cleric, and it's a great counter Commodore. So it's just a very good Pokemon in general. And then we already know about Colossoil. This set is running Rebound and Rapid Spin. This is Tadasuke's usual set. However, I have changed the EVs. Um, this is the usual Assault Vest EVs, as you saw in the other set. But um, Tadasuke usually runs... I think it's... 74? No, is it 74? Okay, so I guess 76, 180. That's usually what the set is, I think. Yeah, it's, I think that's the set. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, that's it. 76 is 180. And, but in this case, I am... Wait, no, no, no. It's... Ah, I got it I got it wrong. Get a suitcase is usually 180, 176. But in this case, I switched the 80 out and put it here. Because with that, you can survive one Dora's superpower, and that is important. So, that's that. Um, he runs rebound, which makes sense. Because as this team really doesn't have any answers to um, hazards, and with Pinsir being double weak to rocks, Colossoil can act as a very good hazard remover. Because with Rebound, he can switch in and reverse the hazards. Or if they're already up, he can switch in and wrap and spin them. And that's very useful. So this set is to, meant to deal with that. And Earthquake can knock off just pretty much standard stuff on Colossoil. Sucker Punch. It's his personal preference. It's a very good move and lets you out deal with things that otherwise outspeed you. Very useful. Um, then you have Heat Ran. Usual Heat Ran special defensive set. You can get some poison damage on stuff that would otherwise wall make a pincer. And walls a lot of things because it's great typing. So it's just a very good Pokemon for that point. And Keldeo is a choice space user which is meant to break through walls and has a very good ability to, to at least Scare Cycle Helm and Call of Soil because it has um, Hydro Pump and Scald. Scald can deal with Cycle Helm. Scald, with it. Scald deals with Call of Soil because he can't rebound it, and unless he's Guts, he's going to be hit by that. And the Guts users usually run either Assault Vest or Flame Orb. Flame Orb is probably the worst item, I think, on Call of Soil, but um, Assault Vest can, is definitely better, but people run that. Anyways, um, just. This guy can deal with a few of them and is very powerful in general and can help sweep through teams. Not sweep, but revenge kill and KO teams, and that's very important. So um, we have Keldeo, Heat Ran, Call of Soil, Cycle Hunt, and Pinsir, and Landorus. Um, if you have noticed with these teams, none of them are completely capped. This is a major thing that most people do when they start off in cap. Most people start off in cap using all cap teams. And it's fun to enjoy using all the new guys, but you pretty much set yourself up for losing by using all caps because they are not meant to work together we, when we build the caps in um, on the smog and forms um, the caps are built to focus around OU they're meant to have OU partners and be in OU so having cap all cap team you don't really do very well and on top of that Having an all-cap team really shows that you don't know what you're doing in the cap meta game. People that have been playing for a while see an all-cap team and they instantly go, "Oh, this person doesn't know how to play well. I get an easy win." And so it's just it's something better not to do is just to stick with using multiple kinds of Pokemon, using cap and regular Pokemon. Um, this last team is made by Heal and Deal, who is acquaintance on um, Smogin. And um, with this team, he's pretty much built the bulkiest, um, like, oh, I don't, oh, he calls it a Bose team. It's bulky offense with wish support, but my gosh, it's just so hard to kill. Oh, I've had nightmares about this team. Anyways, um, Landorus here is a very good lead and is very powerful with Assault Vest and Intimidate. It's decently, it's solidly bulky and plenty of power. So it's just a very good Pokemon to come in and just do damage. Um, he's not that bulky, really, but he's far from bad. So, um, But it's a good set. 
And then we have Sizer here as the defogger to help, because this team is going to be switching a lot. And as it's a wish support team, there's going to be lots of switches. So, you need to keep hazards off your side, and with defog, you can get rid of those. Bolt punch lets you revenge things, and bug bite does the most damage of any um, bug move for Sizer. I personally like you too, man. But this set likes Bug Bite, so it has Bug Bite. Mm. Then we have Chansey. Chansey is a pretty solid wisher, you know that. Everyone knows that Chansey is the ultimate wish passer. Um, Evil Light, it's max defensive, probably for Colossal in that point, but it's just a regular set for, for um, Chansey. Then we have Alamola here. Alamola is a usually RU Pokemon, I think, right? Yeah, RU. And um, the only reason that Heal is using this here is because with Wish, it's very physically defensive, and Chansey is very specially defensive. These two together are a frickin' wall of horrible proportions. They can switch into each other passing Wishes and just frickin' stall out everything. And then with Heal Bell, he can cure the only weakness Alamola had, which is it can be poisoned. With Regenerator, it keeps coming back to life, and so it's just ugh, a nightmare. Anyways, then we have Sylveon here. Sylveon is a um, clerical attacker, something similar to a power cleric, which is a term I coined. Anyways, um, with Hyper Voice, it can deal severe damage on, thir on things that are super effective and do pretty solid neutral damage, even though it doesn't have any investment. Um, with Wish and Protect, it can still pass Wishes. And so these three here can freaking pass Wishes all day and pass it to anyone who wants them. So it's just crazy and irritating and insane. Anyways, with Calm Mind, it can even get set up even better and do even more damage, which is just horrifying. And then we have Molox here. Molox here is his revenge killer, and Molox is a very good cap. This is the only cap on this team, but it is a good cap nonetheless. Um, Molox is a 131 special attack um, fire poison type. With that, it's very resistant to fairies, and so fairy types... They're not really an issue on this team, but as they are very prevalent in the cap metagame, Molochs can switch into them pretty much 100% of the time and sludge wave them, which will wipe them out, or eruption anything that tries to switch in, because eruption is by far the most powerful thing Molochs can run and hurts like hell when it hits things because of its 131 special attack stat and eruption. That's just like ridiculous amounts of damage. Um, then. You have 76 speed, which isn't that amazing, but with a scarf, it's plenty. And so with that, you can revenge things. And with dry skin, it has immunity to water and can switch into water, which is pretty amazing. Um, it is hurt by fire more, but that's not really an issue, really, because it's resisted already. So it's kind of only half and half. But either way, it's a good set. And so this Thunderbolt deal with water types that you can switch into. So this is just a regular um, Scarf Moloch set. It's just a very good thing to revenge kill and switch into its immunities and resistances with. Um, helps deal with things that would otherwise be shut down by like Sizer. Sizer here is the physical attacker as well as Landorus. Landorus is probably a physical attacker. Sizer here is more of a defogger and bulk, like a bulky tank. But either way, they're a very good. This team is just really well put together and hard to break it. So it's just. A very good solid team if you don't know how to play very well, and I personally suggest this team over the other two. The other two are very good teams, don't get me wrong, they are solid, solid teams. But um, this team's pretty easy to use, and that's the point. Although you have to get used to like doing 60 turn games or more. But either way, it's a very good team, and yeah. So, with that, I'm going to go over the overview now. The overview of the team is... You gotta know these three mons. You gotta know Tomahawk, Kyle Soil, and Cycle Helm. These are the three most important mons in the game, and you have to deal with them. Have a counter for them on every one of your teams, and be able to shut them down. Um, Cycle Helm here is, is substantially weak to special ice types. So if you have Cyclant, which is a cap that's very powerful, but really frail, um, you can usually use him to take out Cycle Helm. But you can use other mons too. Anything that has a powerful ice, fairy, or ground special attack can shut down Cycle Helm. Landorus is another great option. So with these, you gotta deal with special attackers to break through Cycle Helm, as it is just way too physically defensive to try to beat. Um, with that, then you also have Colossal Oil. Colossal Oil here is a great attacker, 
and is really focused on making sure hazards don't ever get on your side or taking in burns or status for you. Causal has so many options for a physical attacker standpoint that it really has it has earned its respect and therefore you need to respect it, have something that can deal with it. Um, usually Colossal you want to focus on physically attacking it. Um, anyways, Condor's Mach Punch does a solid amount of damage, but no means KOs it. You need Drain Punch to KO it. Anyways, um, with this set, it usually runs 176, and with the Assault Vest, 176. With the Assault Vest, it can usually take a heck of a lot of damage, so you have to be very careful with it. So, this thing is very bulky. For the most, for an attacker, it's bulky. Not as bulky as Psychohelm or Colossal, uh, Psychohelm or Tomahawk, but it's a good bulky attacker. So, um, gotta make sure this thing's dealt with. Um, things that can take its stabs and can deal off super effective damage bag are great options for it. Um, you need to just be able to beat this. Um, then you have Tomahawk. Tomahawk is the most respected of all the caps. You gotta be very careful around it. It's can just, oh, it's so important to get rid of. It's not like something that can destroy your team, but it can do so much for the opponent's team if you don't deal with it. Um, Intimidate Hawk isn't that common. I personally don't like it, but people do use it. Prankster is its amazing gift, and so you must be able to deal with it. Have something that can magic bounce, something that can taunt, something that can take flying hits and then taunt. You gotta be able to deal with this thing. Have a counter, have something that's fast enough to take it out. Usually it runs physically defensive, so special attackers do very well against it. Um, Psychic, Lightning, and Ice types for the most part are the best options against this thing. And so having those mons there for it is your main goal. So with those three mons in mind, you've got to also remember that Fairy types, especially Sylveon, are very common in this metagame. And Sylveon runs two different sets, as you know, the Cleric and the Choice Spec set. Now, both of those sets are very powerful, and both of those sets can take advantage of all three of these caps. Because Colossoil, although is especially bulky, Sylveon's Hyper Voice is just so much more powerful than Colossoil's bulk. And so, Sylveon can obliterate Colossoil, can obliterate Tomahawk, can obliterate Cycle Helm. And so, it needs. To rem you need to remember in this cat metagame that Sylveon and the fairies are everywhere. You gotta have an answer for them. And so, everyone knows that dragons and steel types are pretty common. That's just usual knowledge. But fairies are especially common in cap, and so are these cap trio. So with that in mind, the main three points you gotta remember is have a counter and or plan to deal with the cap trio. Um, Tomahawk, the Fighting Flying type, Cycle Colossoil, the Dark Ground type, and Cycle Helm, the Dragon Electric type. You gotta deal with all three of them. Fairies are a good answer for that. With that said, fairies are very important in the cat metagame and you need to be able to beat them. Because the fairies are important, you need to have something that can counter them. Be it a Poison type, Fire type, Steel type, whatever you want. Just to be able to deal with those Pokemon. Anyways, then, the final thing is... Be smart about Cap. Try to make teams that use OU Pokemon. Try to combine things to make sure you get the things right. Read the analyses of the Pokemon you're using, like Tom Hawk, Colossal, Cycle Helm, and try to find good partners for them. Don't just stick with trying to use all Caps, because for the most part, that's a sign that you're a new player and that people, you'll probably lose the battle. There are exceptions. Especially when you have bad days, like I did last week. Ugh. But anyways, um, you got to learn these things. Caps. Don't use a whole team of them. The cap metagame is meant to be used with OU Pokemon. So caps and OUs together are a good thing, or a very good thing. So usually most teams you see about two to three cap Pokemon, the rest being OU. And that's a very good thing to be at. Using all an OU team is possible, but it's not very, no one likes it. They'd probably get mad about it, but not really that big of an issue. But using all cap is an issue, and you should probably not do it. Anyways, with that, that is my introduction to the cap metagame, and I hope you like it. And until next time, guys, rock your life.